What is the difference between a wax, a sealant, a compound, a polish, a glaze, ceramic coating, an all-in-one polish, a ceramic spray sealant, a spray wax, and everything in between? We're going to explain in this video all of those things because a lot of those terms have become synonymous with one another or have completely lost their meaning altogether. So follow along as we wash and polish this beautiful little BMW and I'll go over all of those terms. Now this video is more of a back to basics video. So if you're watching this, it means that maybe you're a beginner and you want to figure out what all those terms mean and what you need to use to get your best results. Because with all of those different things, waxes, sealants, ceramic coatings, polishes, glazes, what gives you the best gloss? What gives you the best durability? And when do you use each of those things? So let's get into it. Before we get started on all of that, what we're doing here is our paint enhancement service. So nothing on the interior, exterior only. We're going to wash it, decon it, and then do our paint enhancement polish and then seal it. No ceramic coating, but we are going to use a sealant of some sort and I'll show you that at the end. It does have some minor swirls and water spotting in the paint, nothing too dramatic. So hopefully we can reduce that by 50 to 75%. And that's what our paint enhancement is intended to do. The wheels on this are amazing. And it did have a roof rack on it, so that's why you see these there. We're just gonna clean these up and then reinstall everything. Now there is some sort of etching here. It looks like from bird droppings possibly. So we'll see if we can remove that as much as possible. And we do have little dents in here as well. And the paint is not jet black, but it actually has a little bit of pearl in it. So it's almost like a really, really dark charcoal gray. Now this is what they call the pre-soak. It's basically a pre-wash. And instead of doing our APC rinse because it's really hot right now, and yeah, we could do it. We could rinse down the vehicle, cool it down, even though it was in the garage, which is fine. So it's not hot to the touch. We could have done our APC rinse, but I'm trying out this method for a little bit to really see if it works for us because a lot are claiming that pre-rinsing is just kind of useless. You don't really need to do it, but pre-soaking like this or foaming with this type of a stronger snow foam or a soap is supposed to work better. Is that really true? Am I really finding that to be the case? Uh, we'll see in a couple of months after I'm, you know, kind of putting it through its paces and really seeing if it's making a difference on the vehicles that we detail. But what we're doing is soaking the entire thing down with the Jimbo's Super Soaper, letting it dwell for a little bit. You can see it's starting to break up here. Now, when it does that, you can even see that it's drying out here. You can just rinse it with water just to make the water go on it and just kind of, you know, make sure that it's not drying. But once you start to see it break up like that, I don't let it dwell any longer. Let's rinse it off. So that's a good effective pre-wash. I don't really see any protection on this paint whatsoever. It is completely dead. So some have experienced staining either with this soap or other soaps, or sometimes even an APC rinse. What could be happening is you're letting it dwell for too long. Don't go by the minutes. Don't go by three, five minutes. That's not proper. Go by the situation. If you're in the full sun, Obviously, that time is going to be cut down dramatically, sometimes even 30 seconds. It's enough to cut the grime on the paint and to be able to do a proper pre-wash. So that's totally fine. Never let anything dwell just for the time part of it. Let it dwell according to the circumstances. So I think I've had a lot of detailers say that the APC rinse stained or their pre-wash has stained the paint. And I asked them, how long did you let it dwell? They said five minutes. I think that's the wrong answer. It's not about the time. It's about how much did it dry on the paint. So once you start to see it dry, rinse it off. It's done. It's done its job. So now we're going to foam it down with our wash soap, which is the natural soap, and then get to contact wash. Soap. 
What I really appreciate about the packaging is they use this little piece of waxed paper to put on the synthetic stuff here because sometimes this can heat up and stick to the, the cardboard packaging or the plastic packaging and it can actually ruin this. So having this type of a non-stick waxed paper on here, brilliant idea. Now everything is washed and deconned, but what I do for chrome emblems is use a water spot remover. You can use a degreaser if it's grimy in here and moldy. You can use an acid-based water spot remover if you have water spotting problems. Or if you have iron particles in here, then you use an iron remover. Not just one product fits the bill. So uh, it's kind of according to, again, what the vehicle needs. This does have some water spotting on it, so that's why I'm using a water spot remover in these emblems. Oh, one more thing before we pull it in. I'm gonna protect these wheels with this spray on rinse off sealant. So these types of products, you can actually spray on the paint and rinse them off immediately. I like to use them for wheels and uh, grill pieces. So spray on, rinse off immediately. Now you're left with protection on the wheels. Not a ton of protection. These will probably only last a couple of weeks until your next wash but it's so easy to apply, why not? We also have a kind of complicated, annoying grill here that I'm also gonna spray because it gets all those tight areas. Now here's the real meat of the video, really giving you a breakdown of what these products do, what they are, and the names of them. Now, like I said in the beginning, a lot of these terms have now become synonymous. For instance, waxes and sealants. Waxes used to be natural carnauba waxes, and they would be the kind that would come in a paste wax form, you would apply it, let it haze, and then rub it off and it would be really difficult. That's old school. Now, what you hear as wax is just a term that covers all general protective types of sealants and waxes and those types of substances that you put on the paint to protect it. Basically for UV protection and for hydrophobics, the beading effect. And the beading effect is useful. Whether it beads or sheets, what you wanna do is have that water leave the paint. So when it beads, you can dry it and blow it off very easily. If it sheets, it sheets all the water off, whether it's slowly or quickly. And that's a good thing also because there's less water on the paint and less chance of water spotting. Sometimes water beading can lead to water spotting depending on the type of water. So if you're using well water, then sometimes it's gonna have minerals. It's going to be hard water. That leaves water spots. Or if your car is dirty and it rains, that can leave water spots because of the dust and things that have accumulated on the paint. So even though the rainwater is pure and good, it mixing with junk on the paint, that's gonna cause water spots. Or if your car is sitting under trees, all that junk and filth from uh, the trees, that's going to leave water spots on your paint as well. Then you have sprinkler systems that just use well water. That's gonna leave water spots. But now let's get into some of the terms. Let's start with waxes. Again, all modern waxes are hybrids. They're some sort of a mixture 
with synthetic polymers, some natural carnauba in there as well. Why do they leave the carnauba in there? Well, carnauba is supposed to give that warm glow effect on the paint. Now, I'm gonna be very honest here. When it comes to gloss or shine or the type of gloss on the paint, I honestly cannot see the difference. It doesn't matter to me. I can't see it, I don't care. As long as it's glossy and shiny, I can't differentiate between warm glow or what some call that plasticky shine look. It's all gloss and shine to me. I don't see it, but I know some people do, or at least they claim to, and whatever. That, that's kind of their own thing. It doesn't matter to me as long as it's clean, shiny, and glossy. That's what matters to me. So when it comes to a wax, let's take this for example. This is made by Phoenix EOD called Gloss and Wax, actually a collaboration that we did with Phoenix. Is this a pure wax? No, it's a synthetic blend. It has Teflon in it, it has other polymers and synthetic waxes and sealants in it. It's a blend, but when you blend things like this properly, it makes for easier application and longer durability. So when you hear wax, it doesn't necessarily mean natural carnauba wax. It's simply a general term that's used for paint protection. Then you have products like spray waxes and spray detailers. What are the differences between those? It's basically just different variations of the same type of thing. Detail sprays, like quick detail sprays, are meant just for quick little touch-ups. So after you cleaned and dried the vehicle, if there's like a smudge here or there, or a little smear, you use this to touch it up. And this is meant for vehicles that are already protected and well-maintained. So it's a maintenance product. Then you have your spray waxes. This is a ceramic spray wax. So there's a lot of terms here that can confuse people. The word ceramic, so does that mean it's a ceramic coating? No. Does it mean it's a natural spray wax? No, it's a synthetic blend of ceramic, SiO2, mixed with other polymers and things like that to make it a easy application and a nice durable product. Products like this are gonna get you a few months of protection, two to three months respectively, but it has its place. This also can be applied on the ceramic coated vehicle or a already protected vehicle. It doesn't matter what type of protection you put on it, you can use this to stack on top of it without worrying about it affecting anything else. Then you have products like this that are a step up. These are ceramic spray coatings. Now, these are stronger. They usually last about six months or so. Again, very versatile product, easy to apply, lasts a long time, and you can apply it on previously protected vehicles. So you can apply stuff like this on a ceramic coated vehicle. Or if you just want one product, you can just use this alone and protect your vehicle initially with it, do all your processes, whether you wanna wash it, decon it, polish it, do whatever you want, apply this. The next couple of weeks when you wash it, you can reapply this. You can actually do it while it's wet. It's totally fine. And then a few months down the road, when you're washing it and it's still beating water, it looks fantastic and you don't really wanna apply this, you don't have to. Wash it, dry your vehicle, you're good to go. The protection is still on there. But you can still use this and stack on top of itself or any of these other products. They can all stack on each other. You don't have to worry about bonding issues that much anymore because so many of the formulations are so similar and they bond to pretty much anything. So that whole ideology of bonding issues, which used to be a thing in the past, is not so much anymore. So you don't have to be worried about that. Now it comes to compounds. Let's talk about compounds and polishes. What are they? Very simply, compounds and polishes are like liquid sandpaper. Think of it like woodworking. If you're familiar with woodworking, I'm gonna try to make it simple. Basically, you have a piece of wood or a piece of furniture that you made out of wood and it's unfinished. You nailed everything together and it looks nice. Say it's a, a table. But you have some little rough spots on the wood, which wood does have imperfections in it. Now, what do you do? You use different grades of sandpaper from a heavier grit to a finer grit. And that heavier grit removes or levels those defects. But if you've ever worked with wood, you see that it kind of leaves scratches in the wood. So now what you have to do is step up the sandpaper. Maybe you start with 800 grit sandpaper. Now you bump it up to a thousand grit. And what that's going to do is level out those scratches and it just keeps refining and refining until you get to a higher grit sandpaper and now your wood surface is like glass. It's still unprotected, however. That's when the protection parts come into it. So waxes, sealants, ceramic coatings is like putting a lacquer or a polyurethane on that wood to protect it. So think about it in those terms. So what compounds and polishes do is level the surface. A cutting compound, like this one for instance, again from Phoenix, their Papa Cut, 
is a leveling compound. This is more aggressive, and this will actually cut out deeper scratches and squirrels in the, squirrels? I said squirrels. Deeper scratches and squirrels in the paint when paired with the proper pads. Pads is a whole other subject that I'm gonna have to talk about later. But again, the liquid part of it is very important. You pair it with the pads, say a medium foam pad or a microfiber disc, which is very heavy cutting, and you're gonna be cutting out swirls and scratches in your paint, leveling those defects. Now, sometimes certain compounds will leave their own minor scratches in the paint because it was so aggressive. It had to really cut out those deeper scratches and swirls. Some compounds refine very nicely. This one actually refines. It's kind of what they used to call a diminishing abrasive, but I don't really think they use those terms anymore. Basically, the abrasives in here break down to smaller ones, and as you continue with your polishing cycle, it actually refines and becomes like a fine polish. So that's actually a great selling point for some compounds. Not all of them do that. You have to read on the bottle and uh, see if they do that or not and do some research on the products. Now I'm giving you a basic overview of all these products, but really it's up to you. You can't just take my word for it. It's up to you to read the bottle. Do research on these products to find out what's best for you. What product do you need for your circumstances? When it comes to gloss and shine, completely subjective. I can't give you any advice on that at all because all of these protection products, in my opinion, give great gloss and shine. Really what gives the ultimate gloss and shine on paint is, is really the cleaning and polishing stages. That's really what brings out the gloss. The protection products, they do add gloss to it, but it's kind of minimal at that point. But they do add gloss after everything is polished. The polishing aspect, think of it like polishing a rough diamond. When they polish jewels like that, they first look like foggy stones. They don't look that great. But after polishing them, they shine. They're not protecting diamonds like that with anything. The jewel itself and the, or the diamond itself is its own protection. What they're doing is trying to get the gloss and the shine out of it. So they polish it with abrasive liquids. That's what we're doing to clear coat. That's what we're doing to vehicles. Cutting compounds, for example, like this one, very versatile product used for cutting out heavy defects. Then, with most paints, they will leave their own little minor scratches behind. Sometimes, you have to check the paint to see if it did or not. Some like this one will finish down very nicely. Then you use a polish. A polish is just a refined liquid. So this will remove any of those other little minor scratches that were induced by the compound, and it will increase gloss, refine the paint so that everything is now swirl-free, and super glossy and beautiful. This is the final step before protection, the polishing part of it. Now I do use the word polish, kind of synonymous with compound. And I do that because a lot of people think compound and they think old school compounds that if used improperly can actually scratch the paint and mess things up. In fact, we did a vehicle the other day where the customer used a compound by hand and it looked like he used wet sandpaper all over his vehicle and, and ruined his vehicle. And we had to then do a full paint correction to remove all of that. So if used improperly, yeah, it, it can actually cause damage. If any of these products are used improperly, you're not gonna get the best results. So it takes some time to learn how to use them and to get the best results out of them. Now, we come to very interesting products that are like polishing compounds. And again, they're hybrids, cross between a compound and a polish, and they're what's called uh, pad-dependent products, which means paired with the right pad, it will work differently. So this right here from Hybrid Solutions Pro, this is from Turtle Wax, they're one and done compound. It's called a compound, but it can correct and finish. Correcting is another term for cutting or compounding. It's just a refined term because what you're doing is correcting the defects on the paint. And then finishing is a term used for polishing or kind of, you know, that final step to make sure everything is nice and glossy before you put any type of protection on it. This is a really cool product because, again, when paired with the right pad, it can become whatever it needs to become according to the pad. So a wool pad or a microfiber disc, it becomes a heavy cutting compound. But if you pair it with a soft black or red pad, like a foam pad, then it becomes a finishing polish. So very versatile, really interesting product. Then you have your all-in-one polishes. Now these, again, are hybrids that have protection in them. Usually all-in-ones are not aggressive as far as the correction ability or the cutting or compound ability. 3D Speed, this is HD Speed, but it's actually called 3D Speed now, it changed names. This is a 
polish with a synthetic protection polymer in it. So you can actually polish the paint, wipe it off, and you're done. It's protected and polished at the same time. Now, usually protection on these are, are not the greatest, a few months, but still, that, that's pretty good for an all-in-one step, making things very, very easy. Now, that word glaze that I talked about before, this actually does say all-in-one correction glaze. Now, that is very confusing. One, it says correction, so usually correction means cutting compounds. It's, it's usually heavier. And then glaze was kind of an old world term for polishing, but also kind of hyper glossing the paint up. And sometimes glazes did have a little bit of protection quality, but it was like another weird synthetic body shop safe uh, type of protection that was in the product. So we don't use that word glaze anymore. It's on here, but I don't even think when they repackage it, they put it back on there. It's an antiquated word. It really doesn't make any sense. So don't worry about glazes. I think Meguiar still makes some of their M-Line products that say glaze on it. I don't use that word and many details don't use that word at all. So this type of stuff is really good for mobile detailers because you can price out packages to do paint enhancements like we're doing on this, polish it out, and then have protection all in one. Now, there have been upgrades to different types of all in ones. There's tons on the market. Again, read the bottle and see what they do, the type of protection uh, that is in them and, and how long they'll last. One of my new favorites for all in one polishes, 3D Speed was one of my favorites when I was mobile, but my current favorite now is Blend. So, Blend from Vonix is an all in one polish but it has ceramic built in. Now this again is a hybrid protection product. It has Carnuba in it because uh, the company Vonix actually owns Carnuba tree fields and they produce high grade Carnuba products as well. You can get paste waxes from them that are like hybrid car Carnuba paste waxes and they're awesome. But again, these are super easy to use. This is a hybrid with Carnuba, SiO2 and other polymers in it. So a synthetic protection blend, super easy to apply. This stuff is awesome. In fact, I think I'm gonna use this today on this vehicle. Now, some companies will have paired products that work really well together. Blend has their blend, again, named the same, same thing, but it's their ceramic carnauba spray wax. Now they use the word wax, but Really, this is a spray sealant. This boasts about four months, and Blend on its own, the all-in-one polish, also boasts four months. Now, if you combine these, if you top them, does that mean you're gonna get eight months? No, it, it means still you'll get four plus months, maybe a little extended, maybe five, maybe six months, but that's really dependent on how the vehicle is maintained. Does it sit outside? Is it garage kept? How is it washed? Is it washed properly by hand or does it go through car washes? I mean, those variables come into play when it comes to the durability of products. So even though products might say three months, six months, one year, will it really last that long? It is all dependent on how it is cared for. So the whole idea of products lasting their intended durability range does not depend at all on what the bottle says. It only depends on how it's maintained. That's the bottom line. Moral of the story here is protection is only as good as how it is maintained. Same goes with ceramic coatings. Now, ceramic coatings are in a whole other ballpark. Ceramic coatings come in little bottles like this and they are applied differently. More meticulous, they can be applied outdoors, but we don't do that. I never have applied them outdoors and I never will. But when applied outdoors, I mean, you have a lot of variables at play there. You have dust and you have wind and just other things that could get in the way and even the temperatures. So in a controlled environment, I think you'll get the best durability, but they can be applied outdoors if you really need to. I just don't recommend it. But with ceramic coatings, these are in its own world. After you wash and decon, compound and polish the paint, whatever your service is intended or whatever the customer wants, if, you're, they, if they want a full paint correction or paint enhancement or whatever the case, then this stuff is applied. And there is a meticulous way of applying this stuff to get the best durability out of it. Now, when applying ceramic coatings, I have found the best prep work is using a primer polish. So we use Dr. Beasley's NSP polishes. These are specifically designed for ceramic coating application. 
you polish, you final polish with this, or you can even do paint enhancements with this. And then once this has been applied and wiped off, basically working it in like a polish, then you apply your ceramic coating. This acts as a primer. It cleans the surface, it primes it, leaving a base layer of ceramic particles on the paint that are bonding already. And then this subsequently bonds to the paint and the ceramic particles that are all bonding to the paint at once. This is not a layer that this sits on. That, that's not how it works chemically. Really, this is bonding to the paint and it's bonded to the paint. Then this bonds to the paint that has the bonded ceramic on it. So some think that this is just a layer that's in between that could interfere with your ceramic coating bonding to your paint. And that is not the case. This is formulated to be a primer. It's very similar to painting. When you're painting walls, you use a primer, not just for hiding imperfections on walls, which some primers can do, or producing a certain texture on the wall. That's not what it's for. Paint primers on walls or surfaces are meant to help with adhesion. So this is like an adhesion promoter, which that also plays into the automotive world because there are adhesion promoter sprays you spray on the paint, and then you spray your color, and then you spray your clear coat. So is that just sitting on that layer of adhesion promoter? No, absolutely not. That's not how it works chemically. So this in the same way is an adhesion promoter for ceramic coatings. It makes them last longer, bond better. That's what we found. We can put one layer of a ceramic coating after using these products and we're getting the intended durability, sometimes a little past it. So do they work? Absolutely. All right, so here is a before and after. That is before. You can really see those straight line scratches. The paint just looks hazy, does not have any good clarity to it. We move over to the polished area and it looks incredible. 100% perfect? No, absolutely not. You're gonna see little swirls and little tiny imperfections in there because it's a paint enhancement striving for 50% or more. Huge difference. And that's what we're going for. So for this, Yellow Rupes Pad and Vonix Blend.
So the paint is now polished and sealed and it's looking incredible. Now, again, th this vehicle still has some light swirls in it because it wasn't in for a paint correction. So if the customer wanted to go further, yeah, we, we could do that. But remember when doing any type of polishing on the paint, it is not uh, dependent on what the paint needs. It's depending on what the customer wants and, and what they're paying for. I would have loved to do a full correction on this because there's areas where I, I think it needs it, but I'm not gonna go any further. I'm not gonna just do it without charging appropriately for it or informing the customer. So I've done that before where I said, hey, do you want me to go a little bit further? The swirls are really bad. And the customer would say, no, I'm fine with it. I don't need all the swirls removed. I just want 50%. You know, I give them that number and in their minds, they're fine with that. That's why I use percentages. I think people can visualize them a little bit better. I know I do. So I use that, uh, those percentages, and, and it helps people to kind of figure out what they want on their vehicle. Sometimes on softer paint, doing a paint enhancement will lead to like 90% correction. I don't say that to the customer and I don't charge a paint correction price because I got that amount of swirls out. It's just sometimes you win, sometimes you lose on those types of jobs. You just never know. On hard paint though, sometimes we work extra hard, almost like doing a paint correction and still only getting 50%, like putting in the work of a paint correction service, but still only achieving 50% because the paint was just either so trashed or so hard to work with that even cutting it was giving us a hard time. Again, it's just you win some, you lose some, and that's something you have to work on in your own business and uh, figure out your methods and your techniques and then charge appropriately and communicate really well with your customer and help them understand. Again, even with the best communication, I have had customers say or assume that they were getting something such as a full interior or a basic interior, even though that was nowhere in the service or nowhere in our conversation saying that we were going to do the interior at all. I've had a couple of customers do that to me where they came, they said, oh, everything looks good. And they opened the door and they're like, why didn't you do the interior? I said, oh, that, that wasn't on the ticket. That wasn't on the, the job. And they're like, oh, I, th I would have assumed or thought it would have been a basic interior included. No, 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 no. We don't play that game. That, that's not a thing in the business, in the detailing business world. You don't just assume things like that. So if a customer does that, it's kind of a red flag. I usually just don't work with those customers anymore. I kind of blacklist them and I never see them again. I never deal with them again. So that's just something that we do. Sometimes you just have to do stuff like that to protect yourself from people like that. But that's a whole other conversation. I've talked about that in many, many videos. That does come to dealing with difficult customers. Perhaps that's a good subject for the podcast. I digress. Vonix Blend is my new favorite all-in-one. It works incredibly well, and the protection is a little bit better than 3D Speed, my previous favorite. And it has its partner, the synthetic spray sealant that goes on top of it. So that's why I like these two. This thing is just incredibly glossy. Now, again, when it comes to shine and gloss, in my eyes, this is giving off a beautiful, glowy gloss, even though I didn't use a Carnuba wax. But to me, that's what it looks like. Maybe it's the lights in here. When it pulls out into the sun at different times of the day, it's gonna look different. In bright, direct sunlight, you know, it'll look super glossy, but say at you know, twilight or the golden hour, it's gonna have a different glow to it because of the color of the paint and because of the light temperature and your, your ambient you know, atmosphere. So when it comes to that type of stuff, I think people are mistaking the lighting atmosphere for what the paint looks like under that specific light. So if they say, oh, it's a soft glow, I'm like, what, what day of time are you looking at it? What type of lights are in your garage? I mean, I, I don't think people are putting that into perspective and understanding why they're getting that type of an effect on the paint. It's probably not the product, it's probably the lighting. And I only know a little bit about that because of filming and doing research on how to do certain lighting with camera and, and all that type of stuff and the lenses and filters and all those types of things. So yeah, I, I really don't think it's the products giving off those types of glossy effects. I think it's more the lighting. But guys, if you have any questions about waxes, polishes, glazes, compounds, all those different terms, more than what I've already explained because probably a lot of it is just going to be, hey, read what the bottle says. What does the bottle say? What does the company claim? You just have to read up on those and you will find that so many all-in-ones do the same thing. They might 
have different terms on them, but they do exactly the same thing. Same with compounds, same with polishes, because there's different grades of polishes, different grades of compounds. They're just different variations of liquid sandpaper that do slightly different things. So you don't need all the different compounds and polishes. One good compound and one good polish is usually all you need. And then you just kind of change up your technique. You can even mix those two right on the pad. One drop of compound, one drop of polish, or two drops and two drops. And that can actually change things. That can actually mix on the pad and create a medium kind of hybrid compounding polish. And you can get different results with that too. So there's a lot of experimenting. There's a lot of trying of new things to get the results that you want. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to mix some things together like that. That's actually how a lot of new products are made and new methods and techniques are kind of invented or thought of because of people experimenting and doing those types of things, which is really cool. And that's what this industry does, is they will try things and experiment with things and get incredible results. And you'll see that either on YouTube or sometimes the forums where people will say, hey, do this and this or try this and this, and you'll, you'll get a great result and see what happens. I will never set a rule saying this is the best product or only use this product because that doesn't make sense. You can't make a rule like that. You can work according to principles. What I showed you were all principles of those products, a general outline of what each of those products do and, and the terms behind them, what compounds do, what polishes do. It's up to you to use those products and experiment with them and see which ones work for you and which ones give the results that you want. And again, they will vary according to the car you're working on. New cars, older cars, repainted cars. I mean, there's so many variations, there's so many variables that you have to think about. So again, let me know down below if you have any other questions. And I did a really interesting experiment using all-in-one polishes. This one here and 3D Speed, if you're familiar with that. And what I did on the trunk is proved that all-in-one polishes actually remove swirls and don't just fill. Check out this video here.